Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you're very welcome. My name's Laura, and in this video, I'm going to run through a bit of a timeline of what the application process looks like for students who want to study medicine at a UK university. So if you're anything like me, you'll want to be prepared and have a bit of a plan in place of what you're going to be facing over the next year or so of your study and what the process will look like for you on your journey to a UK medical school. So to avoid any panic or to get into any situations that you weren't expecting and any events to creep up and you not be prepared for, I've created a simple guide to help you through your journey over the next couple of years of applying to a medicine school in the UK. So first of all, just a brief overview of how the sort of years before going anywhere near medicine sort of look like, starting at GCSEs. So even prior to GCSEs, you'll be deciding what GCSE subjects you want to sit. And these will sort of have an impact of how your future will look like um, in regards to a medicine course at a university. So the sort of decision making of GCSE subjects begins in year 10 or third form and you will be choosing subjects that you think will put you in a good place for going on to study your AS and A levels later on in your school career. Subjects such as biology, chemistry, maybe maths and physics, um, sometimes universities look for languages, are all good subjects to have under your belt to put you in the right sort of direction for a medicine degree. All unis in the UK look for you to have passed um, your basic subjects at GCSE level, such as English and maths, as a definite pass. If not, some will state that it has to be of a certain grade, maybe an A or a B. So you sit your GCSEs in Form 4 and Form 5, which is year 11 and 12, and they are two years worth of studying and you sit your exam at the end of that. That will sort of give you an indication as to whether you've achieved high enough grades to then go on to choose AS levels and A levels that will put you on the right track for a course in medicine. So I'm aware that some of you watching this might live in other parts of the UK that do not require AS levels to be sat. But in Northern Ireland, where I live, we have to sit AS levels as part of our school curriculum. So AS levels are sat in your lower sixth year or your year 13, which means that you sit uh, your chosen four subjects um, for that year and you sit the exam at the end of that year. And the four subjects that I chose were biology, chemistry, physics and maths. And they are the sort of typical subjects that a lot of students will pick when studying medicine. There are many other options to pick. Lots of people choose languages and um, a variety of other accompanying subjects. But a lot of universities stipulate that at A level, a student must have biology, chemistry and a maths or physics based subject, which means that at AS level, you must study these subjects to then carry on into the second year of study for A level. So in your final year of school, you study um, A-levels and that will be in your year 14 or form upper sixth. And that basically means that you will be completing your um, two years worth of study for that A-level. And uh, a lot of universities will look for specific A-level subjects. So it's a good idea to have in mind a couple of subjects that you must have on your uh, grades uh, to in allow you to then choose to study at your chosen universities. On top of all of these um, exams and uh, subjects that you must sit, you've also got to be aware that there are a couple of things that will creep up each year that will make the difference between you being eligible to apply to a UK med school or not. And in the next couple of minutes, I'll just share with you what those are, when they'll be coming up and how to make sure to stay on top of the game at all points. 
So when thinking of a bit of a timeline, um, starting back at your GCSE years, you might want to think about accompanying your studies with some extracurricular activities and volunteering or extra um, research or things that will make you stand out when it comes to the final part of the process, which is interviews or your personal statement later down the line. So for me, at GCSEs, I um, started doing my Bronze Duke of Edinburgh as award, which was a really, really good award to be able to combine quite a lot of things. And to be able to put that on your personal statement was a real tick in the box. So I was able to then do some volunteering, which also accompanied the um, Duke of Edinburgh's award. And I completed both um, bronze, silver and gold over my three years of GCSE and A-levels studies. Universities love to see multi-talented and um, sort of a very broad extracurricular lifestyle of a student. They're not just looking for someone that can pull out great grades, but to set you above the rest, they want to see that you're able to have a social life as well as an extracurricular life on top of your school work. Things like this might include um, improving your skills um, by playing sports or musical instruments or joining a member of a team or something to improve teamwork. And all of these skills really do shine through at interviews and on your personal statement. Great teams to become a part of are simple things like at your school, maybe you've got a running team or a hockey team or a rugby team or other solo sports like tennis or um, swimming. These are all great um, at showing that you're committed, that you can multitask, that you're able to plan and be on top of things. And combining this with your school grades and work can show that you are able to pull things out of the bag, even under a lot of pressure. So during your A-levels years, so AS level and A-levels, and that's then your year 13 and 14, it can get quite busy and hectic. So you do want to have a good idea of what's coming up. To begin with, you'll want to start uh, diversifying your um, ability to have done some volunteering, maybe have done some work experience and make sure that you really do want to commit to a course like medicine. It's a really good idea to get some work experience to make sure that medicine is definitely the career for you and also to be able to speak about it at your interviews makes such a difference. You can bring up some real life examples of issues that came up and how you rectified them and also um, show some real life knowledge of what you saw on your work experience. Not all unis look for work experience, but it is useful to be able to um, purvey some sort of research and understanding of a real life of a doctor. Unis really love to see voluntary work and this can be from a range of different aspects. It could be that you volunteered at your local kids club, you maybe taught some people how to play hockey or to sail, you uh, gave up your Saturday mornings to go into a local nursing home or a charity shop and help out. There's so many different ways to volunteer and the universities absolutely love to see this on your personal statement. It's the ability to show that you've got compassion and care and that you're able to give up your time and help others is a real um, asset to your ability to stand out from the crowd and look really good at a medical interview. Coupled with this, during your year 13, you really want to start thinking about your UCAT. Your UCAT is the clinical aptitude test that takes place at the end of the summer of your year 13 or lower sixth year, just before you start your A-levels. I hadn't heard all about the UCAT until quite close to the time when you were asked to sit it. And it was definitely quite a shock to me and the rest of my family because my dad's a doctor and he never had to go through it for his application to university. So he didn't even realize it was part of the application process. 
it definitely took more preparation than I was able to give it but luckily enough I actually pulled it out of the bag and got a decent score and was able to apply to my chosen unis but that I have heard stories of people that haven't had enough time at all and unfortunately didn't then get to their chosen courses and universities. So during your year 13, it's a good idea to start having a bit of a think about how you want to start preparing for the UCAT. If you haven't already, go check out my UCAT video all about how to prepare for it, how to do well, and the individual sections are broken down on my YouTube channel. The UCAT is a very important part of applying to medicine and a lot of universities weigh it quite highly on their um, criteria for your eligibility to apply to their university. So make sure to think about it and have it on your radar when you're starting your year 13. During the summer of your year 13 or lower sixth year, into your upper sixth year or your year 14, you'll want to also start thinking about researching some universities and getting a feel for where you'd like to go and study. At this time, you might also want to start thinking about writing a personal statement, which is a requirement for all universities to allow them to get a bit of a background about you, your skills, qualities and personality. It can be quite a lengthy process and you can only have a maximum of 4,000 characters, which isn't actually very much when you want to squeeze in all of the amazing things that you've done. It's vital that you give it enough time to um, get some proofreading and get someone else to read over it before you submit it in the sort of September time of your upper sixth or year 14. If you would like more help with a personal statement and you're struggling a little bit, go check out my YouTube video all about how to do a great personal statement and make sure to avoid any errors and include all of the great things that a university is looking for from a perfect medical student. So during your final year at school, which is year 14 or upper sixth, you'll also be required to fill out a UCAS form. So coupled with a personal statement, you'll also have to get all of the qualifications and grades that you've done over the last couple of years and anything else that you'd like to include onto your UCAS form. If you'd like more information on how to complete a UCAS form, check out the rest of my channel for more hints and tips. Your UCAS form is then sent off to the universities of your choice and you'll then um, get word if you've been selected to attend an interview or not. Once you've completed your UCAS form and you've sent that off to your chosen universities, it's a good idea to cast your eyes ahead to get a bit of a preparation and plan ahead for your potential interviews. Once you've sent off your forms to your chosen universities, it's a good idea to start planning ahead and do a little bit of preparation for potential interviews. It can be hard to sort of get in the mindset of interviews if you haven't actually been given any confirmation from a university that you're going to be able to attend one, but it is a good idea to get ahead of the game and think about a couple of things that you might want to use during an interview. Interviews can happen right from November sort of time all the way through to the end of April. So don't get disheartened if you haven't heard from your university if you've been invited to interview yet. It can be hard to keep focused for that length of time and do a little bit of preparation, but don't worry as long as you do a little bit at a time and check out my YouTube video all about how to do well at interviews, you should be good to go and do your best. Once the university's interviews are complete, you will get word from the universities if you've been successful and got an offer or not. This happens via UCAS track and it's a good idea to keep checking it for updates. This will all happen towards the end of your upper sixth year or year 14 and then rolling into the summer of year 14 when you'll be sitting your A-levels. Arguably the most important part of the process is to get good grades because regardless of if you got an offer or not, without good grades you aren't going to get into your chosen universities. 
So make sure to work your socks off and do your best during your A-levels. It can be hard to keep motivated after such a long stretch of tiresome work, but it will be worth it in the end, come August, when you get your results. So I hope that was helpful and gave you a bit of a guide as to what to expect uh, for the coming years if you are thinking about applying to medicine. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and check out all the rest of my content and videos to help you out on your journey to medicine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!